as Ren said, my name's Bianca and I'm here representing the NTU ACT Casuals Network. I've spent a decade learning in the humanities and believe it or not, it's given me a lot of skills. I have skills to join the dots and there's lots of things going on right now that are connected. When the government changed the rules repeatedly to make sure that university workers couldn't get JobKeeper, when the Education Minister two years ago vetoed a bunch of ARC Humanities grants, Shame. and even the ABC budget getting slashed again and again, all of those things are connected to these fee hikes. All of these things are connected to a common agenda to make it untenable for people to gain information about the powers that structure their lives to make life impossible for people who want to empower others with knowledge, to make our world smaller, meaner, and less connected. The ABC reported yesterday that just in two universities in Melbourne, 5,000 people have lost their jobs. Two universities, 5,000 people. Over the next few months, we are going to see many, many more thousands of fixed term and casual staff members lose their work as their contracts aren't renewed. And the universities won't count this because we aren't counted as staff. We aren't counted as people. We could have avoided this if we properly funded universities from the beginning. The government wants you to think that the current crisis can only be solved by universities permanently shrinking. But we need exactly the opposite. We need a strong, growing, fully publicly funded university sector where every student gets the access to the education that they want and they deserve. This isn't a necessary cut because of the pandemic. This is a coalition government who has hated lefty students since they themselves were in student politics. This is a coalition government who is ideologically opposed to the working classes gaining knowledge. This is a coalition government which is diving in to slash universities while we're all distracted by the pandemic. They want us to ignore this so they can do it quietly. And we say we won't let them. We know that this is ideologically driven because it's not even good policy. It won't even mean that we increase the number of students studying STEM subjects because in, these, in this package, they want to give universities less money for every student studying STEM. And that means that it's a disincentive for the universities to enrol those students. And to think that degrees in the arts, humanities and social sciences don't set you up for a great career is quite a surprise for me. And it must be a surprise to all those government ministers who have arts degrees. The people who are going to suffer under these cuts are the working class kids who want to study politics, but don't want to carry around debt for decades. The university lecturers and tutors who have devoted their entire lives to their students who are already out of work. I'm thinking a lot about the tutorial conversations that won't happen, the books that won't get written, and the young people who won't get to be inspired by what they learn at uni. We are staring into the face of a bleak future if these cuts go ahead. And here's the thing, the government really wants those people to suffer. They hate us for our critical thinking, and they hate us when we try to build a better world. So let's do those things that they hate and fear so much. Let's fight for a fair future for all students. Let's demand a dignified living wage for all university workers. Let's put those humanities degrees to good use, making sure students in the future get access to the same opportunities that we've had. The government wants you to think this is a done deal, but it is not. They are terrified of us. The government is terrified of us protesting and organizing because they know our power and we know our power. We have stopped cuts before and we are doing it again. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Bianca. I think it's so right to say that we've stopped cuts before. In 2014, um, a lot of people would have known, would have seen about... Can people hear me? Hello? Stand up, fight back!
Brits and staff are under attack. What do we do? Stand, Stand up, up, fight back. Stand up, fight back. Stand up, fight back. Woo! We have fought against these beehives, against things like these beehives before. In 2014, the government tried to deregulate the higher education sector so universities could charge hundreds of thousands of dollars for degrees. This is part of their long-term plan, what they're doing now. They have always wanted to shift the cost of university onto students and onto um, the casual staff member members, onto the fixed-term members, um, making them have increased workloads, increased, um, you know, tutorial sizes, all of these kinds of things, um, while, you know, gutting the funding to universities. This is not a necessity of the pandemic. This is a symptom of the fact that the government refuses to fund social necessities like education. They instead fund um, mining corporations, fund the military, fund the detention of refugees. We need to fight against these priorities. We need to build a campaign because that is what is necessary um, to fight against these appalling priorities. I'd like to welcome up our next speaker, um, Jonathan Davis. He's uh, the Greens candidate uh, for the Brindabella seat in the upcoming election.